Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Napa Professional Quick Chuck or Quick Release Chuck for air hammers. Air hammers or these types of air tools are just like small handheld jackhammers. Many cheap ones that many people see are small ones. This is an older Marflow and it's a larger version. And just to say, if you do end up buying an air hammer, don't buy one of those small ones. You know, even DeWalt came out with air tools, but their air hammer is really small. And when you use these tools, they're really great for automotive uses, for knocking apart, uh, you know, drive shafts that are stuck together or are really handy for knocking out bushings. Really, the secret to doing garage bushing work is an air hammer. Air ha or bushings in automobiles are often rubber that's cast into a steel ring and that steel ring is then pressed into wherever you need it so unless you have a press or in many front control arms there just isn't a way to get at them very well and air hammers really are the answer the problem with air hammers and this isn't a good example but many of the cheap ones they use a spring to retain the bits the standard air hammers use what is known as a 401 that happens has to do with the diameter of the little collar on the bit let me get this out of here so that'd be the diameter of this it's known as a parker bit there are larger ones that are like half inch or 498 or something like that but they're pretty rare if you ever get an air hammer you always get a, a 401 parker standard so this is a quick release chuck like say, such as this marflow this one actually came with just a billet aluminum retainer uh, because it is a pretty high power air hammer and the springs are just a poor retention system. Uh, they get loose. They are difficult to deal with. On high power air hammers, they end up breaking on you. So this Marflow just came with one of these billet aluminum adapters. Now, or retention collars. You can get these four standard air hammers. And they're at Napa. And they're only like 12 bucks. What was surprising is that spinning uh, extension review uh, was had a huge markup where this was only like twenty six seventy nine or some odd price on the shelf and looking online you know twenty twenty five bucks is what these go for there's two different designs there's like a patented well new one that's really nice but really expensive but for the twenty five dollar range this is also sold as Chicago Nomadic and a few other brands but this is like the most common version. It uses four retaining balls and it's just like an impact driver or anything else. You have a collar that you pull down and allows the balls to retract, allowing you to quickly and easily uh, remove and install bits. Because it's an air hammer, this thing is pretty heavy. It's at least a pound of steel. It has a very stiff spring, so you're gonna have to pull uh, pretty firmly. It's actually pretty nicely built, a nice snap ring on the front. The real only real criticism, well, there's two things. First. Air, most air hammers are designed to use spring retention systems, which means that they don't have, you know, kind of regular squared off threads like this one. Instead, they have more rounded threads. We can just see in there. Here we go. We, now you can see better where this is a plastic collar. It's the only piece of plastic inside this whole chuck. And because it's much easier for them to make a small collar that has those half moon rounded threads. Really, it would have been better if they had made it out of, you know, steel or brass or something like that. But since it's like a thin sleeve that these set screws bite into, it would have actually been a surprisingly expensive part to make because it's difficult to make a very thin sleeve that has threads in it. Machining thin wall objects is a real challenge. One thing I was going to say is some like this older Marflow, which is a, I really like. It has a front exhaust which for some reason I like better on air hammers. They did do a, they did follow some the, the same pitch and then the diameter has been adjusted. So even though this collar is made for spring type retention threads, half moon threads, it will indeed screw onto one of these types of impact wrenches that is designed to only take uh, standard threaded collars. Another thing I was going to mention is that since it is a plastic collar, once you set these screws, you want to set them pretty tight, but not super tight. And then periodically loosen them a little bit and then make sure it's threaded tight. And that's just because the nature of an air hammer being a small air jack hammer, the plastic will compress and you'll need to periodically uh, just make sure that it's staying tight. 
There is another trick that you can do with this is such as this Marflow here, they actually put an O-ring down into the bottom here and you can do the very same thing with this chuck it's just to provide a little bit of cushioning and extra tension to help prevent it from getting loose too easily. These are three millimeter uh, little set screws and there's three of them and then you just use these once you get this down real tight. You kind of want to go evenly as you go around so it doesn't get too badly offset. You do want this to be pretty well centered and you, it's pretty easy to see as you're tightening down the Allen screws or the little set screws how far they're getting sunk into the holes. I was going to say that at least the machine work on this tool is actually really nice. This is a ground exterior surface. Um, there's Loctite on these set screws from the factory. The knurling's really nice and aggressive on the collar. So overall, it really is a pretty well-engineered uh, adapter. And even at Napa for $27, bucks, uh, it's definitely worth it. And it just makes air hammers a whole heck of a lot easier. You don't have to get a ton of tension, but you do want to get some good tension on this. The idea of the plastic collar is one that it deforms. I mean, the whole reason they just didn't machine threads into the thicker collar in the first place, maybe charge a little bit more money, is they're trying to avoid having the bottoms of the set screws just uh, bite into the tool itself, thus damaging the original threads and maybe making it so it would be more difficult for you to put a different chuck on it or just go back to a spring if you for whatever reason wanted to do that. I would also have to say one of those little compact air hammers that seem to be everywhere that are useless. This type of chuck will look a little bit funny because they have usually short little tapered hammer cases and this will be a big old chuck. But on the larger air hammer it looks right at home. Now it is obviously much heavier than the aluminum collar. I mean a whole lot heavier. Um, but it does make for a nice looking air hammer. The extra mass that it does add to the air hammer actually makes it more useful as a tool. It reduces uh, energy that's coming back through the tool because it has more mass and so therefore it's bucking less and actually delivering more energy to the tool that you need. Inserting it's really simple. This well new one is actually a quick release where you can just push the bit in. It's really nice, but those were super expensive. Uh, this is the next best thing, and it really does work pretty well. Using four ball bearings should hold up pretty well. And the reason it does need to hold up is as you're using air hammers, you know, you pull away and then it'll hit the, the bit, and it will come flying and hit against the back of those ball bearings. You can also periodically just twist the collar because inevitably it'll put little dents in the collar, and you can just twist that around just to try to even that out. Otherwise, this thing's a, just a real beauty. You can use, you can just, if that bit's pretty hot, you have to be straight up and down pretty much. Wow. It actually doesn't want to pull. There we go. I was actually expecting that bit to drop out, so it doesn't quite do that, but overall, it's a really nice chuck, and for using air hammers, it just really makes a whole lot of sense. Due to the nature of an air hammer, it actually helps you deliver more power. It reduces the amount of vibration, shock and vibration that you're uh, feeling through the tool and makes it super simple to be able to switch out bits, which actually can be pretty often. If you have something that's stuck and you have to hammer from one side and then hammer from the other, oftentimes you'll need two different bits, maybe a chisel bit on the left side and a riveting bit or you know a flat nose bit on the right side. So in those situations, obviously being able to hammer on one side, swap the bits, and then hammer on the other side just can be a real time saver in those types of situations. And just a bit of fidgeting, it actually has a really strong spring and the machining is surprisingly good. So it's kind of easy to get the, the collar a little bit cockeyed and it won't re retract all the way. If you're actually really firm, then the bit will properly drop free. And then of course you can put it on the ground and it's actually easier. To do it that way so it does operate properly they just put a massive spring on it so that the bit doesn't come flying out when you're actually hammering anyway it's the end of my review of this napa professional uh air hammer chuck these things are really cool i actually i didn't even know these things exist until i saw it at napa when i was buying those sockets 
And what a great idea. I wish I would have come up with it. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.